Well, hello there. I'm Tatiana Volk, the GM Witch, and today we're going to be taking a deep, spoiler-free look into the starter sets currently available for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition while comparing them to each other to help you find out which one you should get. Before we get started, this will be a long video, so I will have timestamps in the deep box down below if you want to skip around to the information you're most interested in. Now I have to admit that I'm a huge fan of starter sets. I think they are a fun, affordable way to dip your toes into a new tabletop RPG like Dungeons & Dragons. And even though I've been in the hobby for several years, I personally find them a fun addition to my growing tabletop RPG collection. All of these were under $20 when I got them, and they have everything you or a loved one needs to start playing Dungeons & Dragons with your friends. They're mostly meant for audiences of 13 years or older, and obviously <laughs> appeal to adults like myself. Of course, different starter sets will appeal more to different people, which is why we're going to review the contents of each of these and compare them to give you a better idea of which one is right for you. You'll also hear me refer to the Game Master as the Dungeon Master, since this is the term Dungeons & Dragons uses to describe the Game Master while playing Dungeons & Dragons. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. Starting with the starter set, released in July 2014, this box includes a 32-page rulebook, a 64-page adventure book for the Dungeon Master, five pre-generated character sheets, and six polyhedral dice. This box is meant for a group of four to six adventurers, and will get them from level one through level five. When I purchased it on Amazon, it was only $11.57. Because this box includes pre-generated characters, the rule book does not focus on creating characters from scratch or leveling them, which is why it's only 32 pages long. If your group is interested in created characters from scratch, the information is available for free online through the D&D Beyond Character Builder or the free basic rules provided by Wizards of the Coast, which will be linked down below along with the links for all of these starter boxes. The adventure featured in the starter set is the infamous Lost Mine of Fandelver, which is a highly recommended adventure for new and experienced dungeon masters. I myself have only played a little bit of it, but I skimmed through it and I can understand the recommendation. I feel like it's a pretty robust starter adventure, and I would personally like to take different elements of it to use in my own homebrew games. It is designed to have a sandbox feel with different locations that the players can choose to, or not to, explore. Unfortunately, I feel like it's easy for new DMs to not realize the open sandbox nature of it and unintentionally railroad players into taking specific paths which isn't necessary. It is designed to work great with theater of the mind, which is when you do not use battle maps or miniatures during combat, which of course is great for new players who naturally have few or none of those things. The pre-generated character sheets are double-sided with all the pertinent information the players need to jump right in and level up throughout the adventure, only leaving space for players to create unique names for the characters they choose. And lastly, the six polyhedral dice set is one die short of being the standard seven dice set that is commonly purchased for Dungeons & Dragons game. Fortunately, the only die missing is not necessary for gameplay since it is a duplicate of the D10, but with a variant to make it easier to roll percentiles or on a random 100 chart. You can roll the included D10 twice to get the same effect. Personally, I feel like this is a great starter set for new DMs simply because of the well-crafted adventure included in it. It may be light on extra goodies, but it has the necessities and you can find additional information freely available online to fill in the gaps if your group wants to create their own characters. Then we have the Stranger Things box set. Released in May 2019, this box includes a 43-page rulebook, a 22-page themed adventure, five pre-generated character sheets, six polyhedral dice, and two Demogorgon miniatures. It is meant for three to five adventurers and will take them from level three to level four. 
When I purchased it on Amazon, it was only $11.24, a similar price to the starter set. The rule book is only 43 pages because like the starter set, this set includes pre-generated character sheets. So there is no information in regard to building a character from scratch included in the rule book. Like with the starter set, you can find that information freely online if you'd like to build your own characters. The adventure is only 22 pages long and is formatted very differently from most Wizards of the Coast adventures. It is meant to look like a homebrew adventure taken directly from the notebook of Mike Wheeler, the DM character in the show Stranger Things, which this box is themed after. Although the adventure in this box is only 22 pages and not formatted at all like normal official Dungeons and Dragons adventures, this may be one of the best adventures for newer DMs that I've seen recently. The adventure is simply written and meant to be a short one shot, which is a game that is usually played in one sitting. It has a classic Dungeons and Dragons theme and gives the DM easy to follow instructions and explanations. But unfortunately, it does not include a lot of content that can be spread out over many game sessions. Like the pre-generated character sheets included in the starter set, these have all the information a player would need to run the character and level it up from level 3 to level 5. Also, like the starter set, this box only includes 6 polyhedral dice as opposed to the standard 7, missing the second d10 that is used for percentiles in random 100 tables. You can roll 1d10 twice to get the same effect, so 6 dice are all a player actually needs to play Dungeons & Dragons. And lastly, this box is the only starter box on this list that includes miniatures. You receive two soft plastic Demogorgon miniatures themed off of the show one painted and one unpainted. Personally, I think this is a great box for a great deal because of the miniatures. It's especially wonderful for Stranger Things fans, but can be a useful tool for new DMs regardless of whether or not they have watched the show. There are a few references to characters in the show, included in the adventure, that can easily be ignored. Otherwise, I feel like the adventure itself is great for anyone. Next up, we have the Essentials Kit. Released in June 2019, this box is jam-packed with goodies, including a 64-page rulebook, a 64-page adventure book, a double-sided map, a dungeon master screen, six blank character sheets, 11 polyhedral dice, 81 cards, and a tuck box to store them in. This box is meant for one to five adventurers. We'll take them from levels one to level six. When I purchased it on Amazon, it was only $18.53, making it the most expensive box on this list, but for good reason. The rule book is twice as long as the starter set because this book does not come with pre-generated characters. Instead, the rule book teaches the players how to create new characters and level them up all the way to level six. The adventure included is Dragon of Ice Spear Peak. Since I'm currently a player and not the DM in this game, I can't comment too much on the quality of the adventure from the Dungeon Master's perspective. But as a player, I really enjoyed the quest-based aspect of it, which gives the players different quests to choose from so they can progress the story. I think the bulletin board of quests is a great way to have a sandbox feel when the DM is new to running a game. Just hand out the currently unlocked quests and let the players choose what direction they want to go. But unlike The Lost Mine of Fandelver, I do not think this method is great for teaching a DM how to give that sandbox feel with a more structured campaign, which I feel is more common in the official Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition content. But, like I said about the starter set, the sandbox nature of the Lost Mine of Fandelver can easily be missed to a new DM if they do not read ahead. You don't have that problem with the Essential Kit. As mentioned before, there are six blank character sheets included that the players must fill out themselves using the rulebook as a guide. A double-sided map is included featuring the Sword Coast and the town of Phandalin, which is the setting for both the Dragon of Ice Spear Peak Adventure and the Lost Mine of Phandelver from the starter set. You will also get 11 polyhedral dice, which includes the standard 7 dice you get in most dice sets for Dungeons & Dragons, along with 3 extra d6s and 1 extra d20. 
This is a convenient set for beginner DMs as these dice can be used together based off of advantage or disadvantage rolls and damage rolls. You then get a dungeon master screen, which many game masters use to hide their source materials and avoid spoiling things for the players. In addition, dungeon master screens have quick reference information that the DM can use while running a game to help quickly answer some of the more commonly asked questions DMs have. Lastly, this box includes 81 cards to help enhance gameplay, starting with nine sidekick cards to allow for a single adventurer to enjoy the game with the Dungeon Master. Then we have 14 condition cards that can be passed out to players to help them better understand what it's meant to be poisoned, restrained, prone, etc. One magic charm card, nine initiative cards, three combat cards to walk new players through the actions they can make during combat, nine quest cards, and lastly, there are 36 magic item cards that the DM can hand out to the players throughout the adventure. For this one, I personally think this is a really fun box to get because it is jam packs with so many extra goodies. They are not necessary, but do help improve the overall gameplay experience. Now from the little that I know as someone who has not yet completed the Dragon of Ice Spear adventure, I believe that it is still a fun starter adventure and will fill the needs of most new GMs. I will mention that since this adventure is set in a similar location as the Lost Mine of Fendelver, you could use the extra goodies included in this box with the starter set adventure. Unfortunately, a DM would need to do some extra work if they wanted to use both adventures in the same campaign since they are both meant for first level characters. Finally, we have the Dungeons and Dragons versus Rick and Morty box set. Released in November 2019, this box set includes a 64 page rulebook, a 44 page adventure, a dungeon master screen, five pre-generated character sheets, and 11 polyhedral dice. This adventure is made for four to five players and will get them from level one to level three. When I purchased this off of Amazon, it was only $17.99, which is a similar price to the Essentials Kit. It's themed after the Adult Swim Rick and Morty cartoon and is filled with similar humor. The rule book is probably 64 pages because of all of the extra themed commentary included in it. Rick, who is filling the role of the dungeon master in the fiction of it all, is talking to Morty, a player, about the rules throughout the rule book. It's very stylized and fits well with the Rick and Morty universe. The adventure is 44 pages and is titled The Lost Dungeon of Rickedness, Big Rick Energy. It's a humorously themed dungeon filled with alcohol and butt jokes, along with a lot of fourth wall breaking commentary for the dungeon master and players to enjoy. The only negative I have is the non-themed monsters in the back of the adventure that slightly break away from the otherwise wonderfully themed content of the book. Like the Essentials Kit, this box comes with a dungeon master screen and it's themed to Rick and Morty and has quick reference information on the inside that the DM can use while running the adventure. The pre-generated character sheets are completely filled out, name and all, with everything you need to jump into the game. Like the Stranger Things and Starter Set boxes, there are additional information printed on the back of the character sheets to give the players everything they need to run the characters and level them up to fifth level. And lastly, this box includes 11 polyhedral dice similar to the Essentials Kit. Your basic seven dice plus three additional D6s and one additional D20. Personally, this starter box really exceeded my expectation. I think the theming was incredibly well integrated into the base material, adding additional commentary that is surprisingly useful for new dungeon masters. Unfortunately, the monster section in the back of the adventure throws off the cohesiveness of it all, since it's the only thing that's not themed in the Rick and Morty style. Regardless, I feel like it has a good level of extra goodies included and a nice amount of content for the price of the box. Okay, so that is the content of all four boxes.
I think all of them have their ups and downs depending on what you're looking for in the end. The starter set and essential kit adventures both have a lot of content that can easily be broken up and used in different ways outside of the adventure itself, making them useful for both new and experienced DMs. And even though the Rick and Morty adventure is just one big themed funny dungeon, the different rooms can be used for inspiration or in your own adventure although probably not as well as the starter set and essential kit, especially if you're doing a traditional Dungeons and Dragons themed game because of the theming and humor of it. All three of the adventures will take several sections to get through and provide a lot of content for the players to enjoy. On the other hand, the Stranger Things adventure is pretty straightforward and best for a quick short game. It is a great way to quickly get an idea of how Dungeons and Dragons work, but will not provide a lot of gameplay for your group in the long run. I am happy with all of these boxes, and although I was a little disappointed in the Stranger Things box initially, I changed my mind when I actually sat down and read through the adventure. The Rick and Morty themed box seemed great right off the bat, and it turned out that was true as I skimmed through the adventure and found humorously themed dungeon rooms and a visually appealing layout. The essentials box is jam packed with goodies, and although I haven't read it, the adventure sounds like it has a lot of great potential and seems fun based off of the little that I've played as a player. And the starter set only has the basics that you need, but a very robust adventure filled with many things that any DM can use. I hope you found this to be a useful comparison video. Obviously, whichever one you choose depends on what you're looking for in a starter set. If you're looking for traditional Dungeons & Dragons content, I do highly recommend both the starter set and the essentials box. Otherwise, all of these boxes are great in their own way. If you like this video, please thumbs up and leave a comment down below and share it with your friends to help grow this channel. Also, please check out my Discord for updates and off-screen chatter. I'm still learning Discord, so please forgive me as I figure things out. And if you like more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. I post a new video every week. All right, until next time.